All right, we just finished showing you that Miller indices can be used to show directions in a crystal. And even better, when you have a set of directions that are crystallographically identical, we can put these in families. For example, the 100 family, we show that with these pointed brackets, includes all six of these members. And we know that it's these six because these are all permutations of this, right? Including positives and negatives. So 100, but also 0, bar 10, and so forth, right? And what those are talking about in the crystal system is all of these directions, right? That this direction, um, we could rotate this cube, and that would be the same as this direction, or the same as that one. They're all part of the same family, and therefore we're able to use permutations to identify all the members of the family. That's pretty helpful. Here's the problem. We need a new system if we're going to do that in the hexagonal crystal system. If you try that in the hexagonal system, you end up with an issue. Let's demonstrate it, right? Let's show this real quick. I'm going to plot this as the x direction, this one as the y direction, and this one as the z direction. So let's go ahead and try and do this and make sure it works. If this is done correctly, then these directions right here, this one and that one, are both crystallographically identical. We could rotate that whole crystal by 60 degrees, and it should have been the same. So we should be able to do permutations, right? And this one as well. But what do we run into? Well, this one right here, what would that direction be? It moves one in the x direction. It does not move in the y or the z. So this would be one, zero, zero direction. This one right here moves one in the y direction, but it doesn't move in the x or the z. So it would be zero, one, zero. So far, so good. That looks like a permutation. What about this other one right here? This one moves in the x and the y directions, right? So it would be 1, 1, 0. Therefore, this is not a permutation, right? So that's a problem. That makes it hard. If we wanted to say all of the directions in the 1, 0, 0 family, we would have missed that one. We would have missed this one over here, and there's going to be other ones that we would have missed as well. So that's not ideal. If we want a Miller indices system that is uh, allowing us to use permutations to find all members, we need to do something different. We can't do a three-member system. We have to do a four-indices system. Here's what we do. Okay, the first thing we do is that instead of having a three-axis system, we're going to have a four-axis system. So let's do one axis right here, one axis right here, a third one in plane, and then one orthogonal to all of them. So that can be Z. This would be A1 a2, a3, all right? The reason we do this system is because it's going to allow us to have a four indices Miller index. So instead of u prime, v prime, w prime, which is what we did in the three system, we're now going to have four. We'll call them u, v, t, and w, okay? How do we convert between the two? Fortunately, we have a way to convert back and forth between these two. Here's the formula. The formula says that u must be equal to one third times the quantity of two u prime minus v prime, right? Where again, u prime, v prime, and w prime, those are the values from the three indices Miller index system. v is gonna be one third times the quantity of two v prime minus u prime. w is simply equal to w prime and t is equal to the negative of u plus v. All right, so let's try it out. Let's go back to our system from before where we had directions that were causing problems because they were not permutations. Let's do this one right here, this one right here, and that one right there. Using our three indices system, those would be the following. Let's go ahead and convert those to the four indices system. We do that by plugging, again, this is u prime, v prime, and w prime. We're going to plug those into these formulas to calculate u, v, w, and t. Here's what I end up with for u, v, t, and w. Now, just like before, we're going to convert those into integers by multiplying the whole thing by three. This gives us two, one bar, one bar, zero. All right, let's see if this is still permutation invariant when we do this one over here. We do that by plugging it into our formula, just as before. Okay, we end up with one-third, one-third, negative two-thirds, and zero. Let's turn those into integers by multiplying by three. One, one, two-bar, zero. Check it out. 
it's a permutation. It's got positive and negative values, two ones and one two. So that is a permutation. Let's try it with this last one and make sure it works for that one as well. Bringing this one down, we're doing the zero one zero system. We'll plug those into our formulas and we find, sure enough, we get negative one third, two thirds, one third, which we can change to one bar, two, one bar, zero, which once again is another permutation of what we saw above. So the whole point of doing this is that it's useful to be able to talk about um, families of directions and identify all the members of that family. And an easy way to find those members would just be to do all the permutations of positive and negative variations of these numbers. We can't do that in the three uh, indices system for the Miller indices that are hexagonal. So we needed a four indices system, and this is the way that you do it, is using this conversion formula, right? So what exactly do these numbers mean? What are these formulas actually showing us? It's actually kind of slick. Um, look at this one right here. Let's say that we were doing this direction right there, right? Well, in order to achieve that direction, you could achieve it by breaking it up into components along each of these other three directions. Here's direction A1, but there's also direction a2, and then direction A3. That one, the Miller's indices of that direction right there is 1, 1, 2 bar 0. How do we know that? Well, it travels 1 in the positive A1 direction. It travels 1 in the positive A2 direction. And it travels 2 in the negative A3 direction. Therefore, it's 1, 1, 2 bar 0, right? It went positive, positive, negative, negative, right? So this is a pretty slick system. I think that it's useful if you're getting into a field of material science where you're gonna be talking about families of directions and you wanna find them all. Otherwise, uh, I don't think you'll commonly use it, but that is how you would use it if you needed to.